Hello guys, how's it going? I'm actually at my other house. I haven't really made a video over here in a long, long time. Well, unless you're, you know, we're watching the other channel. But anyway, that is a different thing. Um, yeah, I'm at my other house, which is where actually most of my uh, computers are. As you can see, I have quite a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, might do a few videos on them, who knows. But anyway, this is going to be a laptop trash pick. Uh, video. So I went to the recycling center today with my dad and I decided to, you know, look in the computer bin and I found these four laptops. Those ones I already owned, I just decided to bring over here. And that RAM is RAM and parts there are for the D500. But anyway, moving on. Um, <clears throat> I got these four laptops out of the bin. Three of them are in very good shape. One of them is utterly destroyed. Yes, it is that one. We'll go over it though. I'm not exactly sure what order. I think I'll do the Dell first just because, you know, I'm Dell 304. So, yeah. But, anyway, this one is a Sony <clears throat> PCG, I think, VX150? FX150. There it is. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, this thing's probably from the late 90s. So, it's got a Windows 98 COA on it. So, it's probably Pentium 2 or Pentium 3. Still, though, it has a pretty large screen for the size of the laptop. Very thin bezel, as you can see. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a 14 or 15 inch. And it looks to be in pretty good shape, especially for how old it is. So, this one actually came with the charger. That charger right there actually came with this thing. It was still plugged in when it was in the uh, recycling bin, so I decided to take it, obviously. So, let's plug it in. That power jack seems kind of wiggly. It might work, it might not. We'll see. So, um, well, it looks like it's, uh, taking a charge, so that's cool. Uh, my dad's weed-eating. <laughs> that's funny. So that one looks like it works. Uh, let's start with the Dell, though, actually. Well, no, never mind. <laughs> let's just go down the line, I guess. So let's try to power this thing on. We have lights. I hear a hard drive. It's beeping. Hmm, might have no RAM. Interesting. Uh, I hear a hard drive running. There is no screen. We have, might not have any RAM. That was a beep code, so. Okay, that's interesting. Let's power it off for now. Okay. Next, we have a Toshiba satellite. Uh, it still has the plastic film, which I'm about to remove on video. Uh, this is from the factory, so it should be in brand new condition on the top. Yep, that looks pretty new. Just has a little, uh, little bit of... Oh, actually, that's a dent. Yeah, so there's a little dent there, but otherwise, since it had the cover on basically its whole life, this thing is in really good condition. Um, this is a Vista-era satellite. If we open it up here, you can see that... Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of these machines, but this one is in really good shape, actually, so... Yeah, it has an Intel Pentium dual core designed for Vista Basic. I am not sure if this has a hard drive. I tried, I looked through the caddy, like the little vent. I didn't see one in there, but um, I will go ahead and try to power this thing on. I have to get my uh, universal charger here. These are all the tips, and I have to find the right one for the laptop, so uh, I'll be right back. Okay, well, I was looking on here, and I couldn't find the right bit, but or the right tip, but it was actually on the actual charger, so... Yeah, it's a 19 volt. Let's see if we can plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. Didn't explode yet, so that's good. I see a charge and a battery light. That's a good sign. Let's see if we can power this thing on. Looks like it has a disc in the drive. Ah, I see. So, it has a red screen. That's probably why it's in the garbage. That could be a bad inverter or a bad cable. But it seems to boot. Obviously, I'm not going to put any money in this thing, cause it's, especially because it's a, a uh, Toshiba, but it seems like it's working. Let's see if it actually boots. Is it just like boot looping in this? Well, at least it, uh, oh. No, it's, I think it's just going to boot loop with this PXE thing. Might not have a hard drive in it. Yeah, media test failure. So it probably doesn't have a hard drive. But it does seem to function, again, with a red screen. So, yeah. Interesting. 
Okay, now let's try the Dell Inspiron 8600. So, yeah, we're not having very good luck yet, but I think there is, um, hmm, there is hope for this Toshiba. It might, it might work. That did not feel, oh, okay, well, we have a light. Could be for, yeah, it says the battery's charging. Let's go ahead and see if this thing powers on. Aha! Uh -huh. Alrighty, now we're getting somewhere. This one seems to work just fine. So far. I'm not sure if it has a hard drive, uh, but it is the... has a Pentium M. Uh, let's go F2. If this one works, heck, I'll be happy. Um, it is 3, so that's... freaking 15... I forgot how to do this with the Dell BIOS. Uh, it is 3.30. One, uh, May 1st, 2015, and that should be it. So let's escape. I'm not sure if that saved the settings. Oops, I forget exactly what button it is. Ah, and it has Windows XP, of course. It's a XP era machine. This one seems to work, so uh, this one uh, might just need RAM or something. This one seems to work, it just doesn't have a hard drive, at least that's what I'm thinking. This one seems to work just fine, and this one is actually completely wrecked. We'll take a look at that one in a bit, but after after this one boots up. I'm so glad this has an IDE hard drive in it, because I need IDE hard drives, something really bad. So I might just pull the hard drive from this one, stick it in the, D, the D500, but that depends on how big it is. It might only be like a 5 or 6 gigabyte, might not be useful. But I do need IDE hard drives. I really hope this one has a hard drive in it too, I haven't checked. So, yeah. It looks like this thing is going to boot, so I'm really, really glad. We'll see. We're getting somewhere. This thing is really slow, so it's going to need an XP reinstall. And I conveniently forgot my Windows XP disk, so I'm not sure if I can do that while I'm here. But, I th actually, eh, I don't think I have a Windows XP disk over here, unfortunately. I should. But, yeah, it seems to have a 1280 by 800 screen. I am so glad this thing works. Like, I mean, I had an Inspiron 8500, I don't know if you guys remember, but the Inspiron 8500 was like the first video I ever did on this channel and that was like really close to my beginning and this is an 8500 here um, as you can see Dylan Spur on 8500 this is an 86 the only difference is this is a Pentium M and this is Pentium 4 but anyway uh, otherwise they are exactly the same and yeah I'm really glad that this thing actually works because it brings me back to when I was like 10. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, while this is booting up, I guess we can take a look at this one. This is a Dell Inspiron 8500. This one is completely destroyed. The LCD is cracked. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you kind of can. So the LCD is destroyed. The power button cover is broken. The cable for it uh, completely snapped off. But the rest of it is kind of still there. So, the d let's see. The display cable is still good. But the, obviously the screen is wrecked. Uh, the hinges, both hinges, are totally shot. As you can see, they both snapped. Oh, sorry, I'm pointing the camera nowhere. Uh, you can see that the hinges both just decided to snap. So the, the screen, while it does, the, while the screen does stay attached to the laptop, it does not stay up in any position at all. At all. Um, the latch is completely broken. It's missing a, ca a cover. This battery is actually from this computer. I swapped them before I started recording because it is a big get dent in it. Uh, this one actually does have a good optical drive and this one doesn't. As you can see, it's kind of messed up. This one has a good optical drive so I'm going to swap that as soon as possible but um, everything else about this machine is kind of destroyed as you can see. It's it's broke. It's done for. I'm not going to put any money into it because the 8600 is here and it tends to, seems to work. So, yeah, I'll just keep this as a parts machine in case I ever need anything for this computer. This one's actually in pretty damn good shape. Little wear on the keyboard, no wear on the trackpad. Everything seems to work. Uh, there seems to be an installed Windows XP on here. It is quite slow. But let's see if we can pull up the specs because I'm interested to see how much RAM and everything this machine actually has. So, wait for it to load. Or not. <laughs> so, 
So, yeah, I'm going to have to reinstall Windows XP because this thing is quite slow. I'm not sure why the hardware isn't coming up. Okay, quick update. This one has no hard drive. Uh, this computer is pretty messed up. I cannot open anything. Like, if I go and try to click something, I click it, it seems to do something and then it just doesn't open. I can't open, like, anything. I mean, if I try it, well, there's my computer, actually. Uh, let's see if we can get to the properties. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, something is wrong here. So, let's see. Yeah, something is, uh, something is amiss here. I cannot, I can't open the task manager. Nothing happens, as you can see. So, um, this thing needs help. I'm really not sure how because I can't do anything on the software and I have conveniently forgotten my XP install disks unfortunately so that kind of sucks all I have is Windows XP Service Pack 1 which doesn't really help so uh, oh well but uh, I'm gonna swap the optical drive and maybe try to reboot this thing in a safe mode or something so I can actually use it Okay, so in safe mode, everything works. I can open everything. I can get to the system properties. So some program is causing something that's not good. So I'm going to make a new user account and probably uninstall everything that's on this. But anyway, as you can see, we have an Intel Pentium M 1.5 gigahertz. Intel finally got over their stupid clock speed thing because I remember my original 8500 with the Pentium 4, I think, was clocked at like 2.5 gigahertz. So, yeah, and it has 512 megabytes of RAM. Well, I actually have one gigabyte of memory here that I might stick in here. I was thinking about sticking it in the D500, but we'll see. So, I might just use this and then, yeah. Uh, like I said, no hard drive in that. Probably no hard drive in that. There's a hard drive in there. I can hear it. I'm not still not sure what's up with that machine. I have to figure it out, but, yeah. I swear to God, it seems like every XP computer that was used by somebody who isn't smart always has this. They were using the administrator account, which as seen here is only visible when there are no other accounts. So, I mean, why were they using the administrator account as their primary user account? That is dumb. If you get, like, download malware or something, they can completely destroy the system. Anyway, I'm going to uh, make a new user account and uninstall some programs from here, and hopefully that will make this machine just a little bit happier. Looking at the programs list, there really isn't much on this machine. There's, like, Nero and Power DVD, but the, other than that, there's really not much on this. Ew, semantic. Yuck. But other than that, I mean, there's like, this is literally it. So I'm just going to uninstall a couple of things and, uh, you know, do my usual Windows XP, you know, stuff, MS config, all that good stuff. And yeah, hopefully this thing will be, you know, better. Okay, so. Uh, obviously the Windows installer service isn't running in safe mode so we have to restart and get into the new user account so yeah and that program bruh uh, next uh, once I'm done with this machine we'll take a look at that one um, I think I have a spare SATA drive in this machine that would work um, it has bad sectors but it might work I tried to install Windows on it and it didn't it said it failed, so I'm not sure if that hard drive is... I'm pretty sure the hard drive is no good, but I think uh, we can take a look at this machine in uh, in more detail. We'll, we'll fiddle with those once I'm done with the Dell. So, yeah. Oh, God. Windows Genuine Advantage. This thing might not be activated. Hmm. <laughs> you just had to do that. <laughs> Okay, so with the new user account, the computer is happier. Um, I can actually load stuff now. It's still pretty slow, so it probably needs all the usual stuff, defragmentation, all that good stuff. This thing has RAM in it, so, I mean, eh, that's not good. It means there's something else wrong that's not simple. Dang it. Um, I have no idea where the hard drive is. This is the floppy drive. This is the um, battery. So... I don't know how to get the hard drive out of here, but I definitely want it for my D500. I hope it's, you know, big enough, but, um, yeah, this thing is messed up. I'm not sure why, but it is quite old. Uh, the battery is one of those non-original ones. 
Kind of funny. It's not the original Sony battery. But I will have to get the hard drive out of here eventually and put it in the D500. The Toshiba, just as expected, has no hard drive, so that's why it was throwing up the PXE boot agent. So I think I'll throw my uh, 160 gig that I have out of that computer in here and see if we can try to get a Windows install on it. Like I said, it has bad sectors, so it might not even boot. But, yeah. So I pulled one RAM stick out of the Sony, and now it works. So I guess this RAM stick is bad, or someone tried to upgrade it with the and exceeded the maximum supported memory. Um, okay, so it does work, which is fantastic. Uh, let's go to F2 for setup. It's, well, yeah, one of those scaled thingamajiggers. 256 megs of RAM. That's probably probably only supports like, you know, 512 or something. It has a 20 gigabyte hard drive, which is cool. This one has a 30 gig hard drive. And since I'm done with it, I'm going to actually start defragmenting it, because it's probably due. Uh, it's not that slow, actually, especially with a new user account, but let's analyze it, and we'll probably defrag anyway. But, yeah, there's not a whole lot. You do not need to defragment. Let's see. So, fragmentation, 9 and 18%. Well, that's usually... Let's defrag it anyway. There's not a whole lot on here, so that's probably why. Um, as you can see, 27.9 gigs, 24 gigs, so it's only using about 3 gigabytes on the disk. So, yeah, but we'll defrag anyway just because, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and see if there's anything on this hard drive. See if it boots to anything. I am glad it worked. Two thousand. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, I still need to pull the drive out of that, but I'll do that after I'm done fiddling with this one. So yeah, interesting. Windows 2000 Professional. Never, I've never received a computer with Windows 2000 installed. Usually, if it's this old, it has 98. But that's cool. Now, that way, I don't have to install anything. So yeah, so far so good. You know, to be honest, especially for free, getting all these computers, I'm pretty glad that at least two of them are, are fully functional, and this one. Um, it's probably functional even with the red screen. So, yeah, Toshiba's, man. I don't like them, but hey, for free, can't complain. Yeah, we're doing pretty well so far, in my opinion. It is booting. Probably take a while. You can do it. Man, that's a noisy hard drive. The bearings on that thing are, like, really loud. Obviously, but, yeah. Um, still defragmenting, not much has changed, so, yeah. Okay, so apparently this computer was used for a business. You go ahead and just make sure there's nothing on here that's, uh, confidential. I'll see if I can get this thing to the desktop. <laughs> okay, as always, uh, of course, this thing has a, um password on it. This was obviously a business machine used at some company, not sure what. So it will need an OS reinstall and I can't do that currently because I have no install disks, unfortunately. So yeah, can't really log on to this one. Might be able to get into safe mode, not sure. So yeah. So this Inspiron 8500 had two or 512 megabytes of RAM in it, so that'll be handy. That's DDR. Cool. So I'll take that out. I think it's time to, well, since I done with this one, can't really do anything with it. Um, this one is defragmenting, which is going to take a while. Let's start messing with that D500, because I actually do want to get that thing up and running. Actually, you know what, I don't have a, I don't really have a hard drive. Well, you know what, I'll probably, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but I might pull the hard drive from this, stick it in that, reformat it, and put XP on it. So, yeah, might do that. Okay, so a little update on this Toshiba satellite here. The red screen actually uh, went away, which is weird, but yeah, I guess that has to be a display cable thing. I popped the 160 gigabyte drive in here, and I stuck a Windows 7 disk in, which is actually the only install disk. Well, actually, no, I have a Windows XP Service Pack 1 disk that I'm going to use for the D500 once I am able to 
get the hard drive out of there. But anyway, um, I put a, put a hard drive in here. I'm trying to boot from the disk right now. It seems to be working, just going kind of slow. We're going to see if we can install Windows on this. Last time I tried to install Windows on this drive, it gave me an error. I assume that's because the drive is kind of messed up, but we'll see. I'll, I'm going to try again. Why not? As for this, the um, Sony VAIO, I have decided to remove the hard drive and just stick it in the D500 and then reinstall Windows XP and call it a day. Because this computer, I mean, Sony VAIOs, I mean, they're okay, but, you know, the D500 is more sentimental to me. Obviously, this is my second one. I have three of them. The other one is at my other house. It's the, that's the perfectly good one. This one has Northbridge issues, so the time likes to reset itself, and the USB ports are pretty finicky, but hey, it'll work as a computer. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the hard drive out of here. I found uh, some instructions online, but the screws that Sony uses for these laptops are so small. Uh, I don't have a screwdriver this small. I am trying to look for one, and hopefully I can find one so I can get the hard drive out of here. But, yeah. Um, Inspiron 8600, there it is. I just kind of set it down there because I only have one Dell adapter. Well, technically not, because I have uh, one on here for the Dells, but they don't like, Dells don't like third-party adapters, and they throttle and tell you to screw off, so, yeah. Anyway, I am getting somewhere, I think. Ooh, the backlight is flickering on this thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's got to be a display thing, or the cable, or inverter, or something with the display, obviously, so. Let's see if we can actually install Windows. Last time it just kind of said screw you th halfway through the install on the other computer so we'll see how it goes. Well we're making progress so far it seems to be working. I don't remember exactly when it failed on the other computer but I'm crossing my fingers here. Um, I That brings me to another subject. I am on a severe shortage of hard drives. I mean the IBM ThinkPad T21 Hard drive just failed recently, like a couple of weeks ago. The Dell Inspiron 8100, which is in that cabinet there, hard drive failed like six months ago or so. I mean, like, and I think, let's see, what else? Um, I think that's it. But still, like, my hard drives are dropping like flies. And of course, I'm missing hard drives for the, a few of the D-series laptops that I have. You know, these ones. I have two more, or three more if you count the other one, but that one has a hard drive. I have two more at my other house that don't have hard drives in them. I need IDE and SATA hard drives. Like, I am in a severe shortage right now. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to get those. I might have to look on eBay and buy a bulk, uh, buy them in bulk. Uh, hope I can do that, but we'll see. I'm in a severe hard drive shortage. But yeah, anyway, I guess I can do a little. Uh, you know, look around at the setup. I moved the PowerBook G4 over here with the iMac G4, so they're on the same desk there. And then, of course, I have I still have the setup for my Power Mac G4 right there, uh, MDD. I need to make a video on that thing, but uh, still have the setup uh, in action. So yeah, I just kind of moved the keyboard and mouse out of the way for the laptops. There's the Dell Inspiron 3200, and that's the Toshiba, Toshiba satellite. So, you know, I just kind of move those around when I want to use the Power Mac or vice versa. Um, here I have my old Macs, obviously. A bunch of old uh, other old computers. So I have the IBM ThinkPad T21. Again, dead hard drive. Dell, Dell Optiplex GX110. There's a Dell Dimension 5600C, I believe. Um, it has a dead power supply. A Dell Optiplex GX260. Works just fine. Just... Uh, I think it has a hard drive in it. Not sure. I don't know. I haven't messed with that thing in a while. Really old 1996 custom built, or, you know, probably a system builder built this thing. It's just a no-name computer. That thing works just fine. Uh, there's an Intermax case with the uh, AMD Athlon system in it. It's missing a hard drive again. <laughs> uh, Dell Dimension E310, again, missing a hard drive. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then inside the cabinet, I have... Uh, Let's see, I have an old Toshiba satellite. Well, I can't really get to it with these laptops in the way, can I? Um, I have the Dell Inspiron 8100, again, dead hard drive. I have the Toshiba satellite Pro... Fuck, I forgot the model number. That thing's RAM is busted and it's really proprietary, so not worth fixing. 
Uh, there's the IBM ThinkPad 380XD. That is a working hard drive, but it's only one gigabyte, <clears throat> so not really useful. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of my computers are not in, are not uh, functional because they're missing hard drives. But yeah, there you go. Okay, so update the Toshiba uh, did the same thing. So it is the hard drive. Uh, that hard drive is destroyed. So mm. unfortunately. I cannot use that computer until I get more hard drives, so I'm going to look on eBay or something for some, uh, like a bulk set of IDE and SATA laptop hard drives. Hopefully I can find something for a decent price, but I actually found this screwdriver set, so this will allow me to open the Sony Vaya, so I have, you know, screwdrivers and stuff in here that will allow me to remove the hard drive, and then we can get working on D500, so, yeah. Target acquired. There is the hard drive. Now I just need to get it out, which shouldn't be too hard, actually. So, yeah. All right, now we have all the ingredients to make this work. This is a 20 gigabyte Fujitsu drive, made in 2001. Okay, that's a little newer than I thought. Um, very loud, but it seems to be fully functional, so we're gonna stick Windows XP on this. I have the caddy for the D500 here, ready to go. Uh, it even <coughs> has the screws in it. I have a little Dell adapter that I need to make it work. I have one gigabyte of RAM here. We're going to install all of these into the D500 and we'll be ready to go. Alright, so I got the RAM and the hard drive installed. Let's fire it up. There's that loud hard drive. <laughs> See if we can get into the setup. So I put one gigabyte of RAM in, 20 gig hard drive. I'll be fine. Got Windows XP service pack one here. I'm not sure if this is home edition or professional, but it's not really like it matters. And as you can see, the time of date is wrong. Oh, I think this one is the finicky keyboard too. Um, oh, well, we don't want to do that. Let me uh, stick the Windows XP disk in. That's more like it. So we're installing Windows. Hopefully everything goes well. It just occurred to me that I'm going to need drivers for this machine, so I guess I'll start downloading those from somewhere. Yeah, hopefully I have a flash drive big enough. I think that one's a 2 gig, so it'll work. Anyway, um, that is going to be kind of it. I'm going to try not to prolong this video any longer. That's kind of not really part of this whole trash pick, recycling, whatever thing. Anyway, so, yeah. There's that. Uh... That's it. That's got to be it, because I've done everything I can with these four laptops. So, there you go. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. hope it was somewhat interesting, and I will see you guys later.